Hello fans of the modular shed. Let's check out the modular shed and in particular the side. And you can see I've got feather edge which is normally used for fences but I thought I'd use it for my shed attached to the side of the shed. Now this feather edge panelling was brad nailed on. There's a brad nail hole just there but no longer because now it's screwed on. They go into an internal frame. Let's take a look at that. Now I've got two types of internal frame. The bottom one which is over elaborate uh, took ages and now I don't like it and the top one which is much simpler. Let's take a look at both of them. The bottom frame I hung on joist hangers. Now there would also be a joist hanger down there but since I've decided not to pursue this technique I haven't bothered to put it in. Now the joist hanger is a 47 and this beam is a 38 millimeter which means this has some play which means that I can both hang this in the joist hanger and pull it against the uh, framework, pull the panel against the framework by putting a screw in there. And that works fine, but this was a lot of trouble rebating these uh, timbers, these are both 38s, to get the numbers to work because I could only sit this central to the post. There wasn't any sideways play. There would have been if I'd cut the metal, but I didn't particularly want to do that. So that's one idea. Now the above panel, and these are two separate panels, there's a sort of 1.2 meter square panel below and about I think a 600 or 500 I think those are above. Now this is much simpler, you've got the uh, upright, these again the 38s, and this is completely rigid and pulled hard into the shed. So it's held up by a sort of lifter bracket and it's pulled inwards by a puller bracket and there is a second puller bracket up there with a, just a single screw pulling this beam into the shed. And you can see that there's a lot less gubbins on this top arrangement than on the bottom arrangement. And of course if I want to insulate this shed, which will be done between the outer panelling and this inner position here, so you'll have approximately four inches of uh, insulation depth, you want far less stuff on the inside of the panelling and my second idea has far less stuff. Okay I'm going to run a time lapse now of these panels being taken off and then put back on so that you can see how it works. So you can see that the uh, panels come off nice and easily. Now the advantage with the bigger panel which is hanging on those joist hangers is that it has to be lifted and then pulled out so it doesn't fall out on its own. The upper panel which is just sitting on a lifter bracket, oh the lifter brackets have been removed because there are the screw holes, they were in the way of lifting up the bottom bracket. So yes, it's actually uh, gonna be easier when it's just the, uh, the three brackets, the lifter and the two puller brackets. That one, as soon as you undo the puller screws, uh, the panel t tends to fall out. So you have to hold it with your hand as you remove the last screw. But that's not a major issue. What am I standing on? I don't know. Now it has to be said that not all the panels need to have this removability mechanism because there will be some panels like on the front here and on this side which I know in my mind are not going to have additional modules connected to them. So those don't need removable panels, they can have panels which are just anchored 
to the framework, the removability is only needed where I think I'm going to have a second module. So on this side, where I'm pretty certain I'm going to have another module, I need a wall which is removable. So that's where we are with the modular shed. It now has a side which can be removed and of course it can be hung on the next module. They're, they're not just removable, they're reusable. So I'm going to run a little time lapse now of me putting those panels back because the shed needs a wall. Now with the lifting and pulling arrangement, these panels are nice and tight to the frame. Uh, this one isn't. You can see there's some movement there. But the reason for that is because I ran out of this particular type of bracket and only had this type of bracket and it doesn't really reach the upright. Now the upright is an inch away from the fence post which is silly that was far more than I needed I could get away with just a few millimeters in there the idea is just that this will fit between any two fence posts because of course they will vary ever so slightly but yes I'll move these uprights much nearer the fence post and then this bracket which I've got lots of um, will fit perfectly well but yeah the combination of a lifter and a couple of pullers and to do this in sections, the lower section is quite heavy because it's quite big. So if I do this again, I could make that perhaps two sections, have a wall made of three completely separate sections. Uh, it just means having a lot more of those brackets. But bear in mind, if this wall is um, moved to a place where I think it's going to be a permanent placement, then all those brackets can come off and I can just screw it straight into the fence posts and have all my brackets back because I don't like having too many brackets in use. So that's where I am with the modular shed. So the removable sides was something I had to think about and it did take a little while to come up with the first idea and then the second idea came about because well I didn't really like the first idea. But um, that's where we are so far. Now that I've got a method of hanging walls, I can get all the other walls on quite quickly and enclose the shed. Then I've got to think about windows and doors, but that's another day. Goodbye.